1998, between 1991 and 98, they were working perfectly. The, the, they had, the Ethiopians had their own facility at the port of Asab, which they controlled, and they paid for that, but they were bringing in their imports at Asab without any interference from the Eritreans, so it was working very well. They were all using the same money. I think uh, the Eritreans made a mistake by creating the Nakfa. They should have kept the same currency. Or when they created the Nakfa, they should have asked the IMF to create a, an exchange system so that at the end of every day, the balance is restored. But instead of that, they created the Nakfa and uh, the Ethiopians said that everything must be in dollars now. I thought that was a mistake on the Eritreans' part. But anyway, it was working well. I asked Mellis, well, well how do you feel about Eritrea <clears throat> becoming independent? He said, the Ethiopian people don't like that. They want Ethiop Eritrea to stay as part of Ethiopia. And I said, well, can you do anything about it? He says, I'm not going to fight them because then they'll go back to the mountains and have an fight back at the end. So he said, well, we'll have to live with that. But he, I know the Ethiopian people don't like that. In my opinion, the, the 1998 war was started by Mellis. Because I've read the, you know, you've heard of WikiLeaks? Yes, yes. This was U.S. US communications yes. that were leaked. Okay. And I, I've been reading those, and it looks to me pretty sure that uh, Mellis wanted to start that war. Why? Towards what end? To topple President no, Sayyid? Yes, or the I to think, rejoin Eritrea? No, I think because or? he wanted the Ethiopian people to see that he... Uh, he, he, he didn't like him. Also, they were blaming him for the independence. Yeah, because he's half Eritrean and, and he, he was blamed that he... was he, blamed, so he wants to yeah. show that, uh, don't blame me, it was the Americans' fault or something. <laughs> so, I, but the, the war became much bigger than he expected. It became much too big and it was a great disaster for both sides, of course. So, uh, my, what I would like to see is to go back to what we had in 1991, which was an economic common market. They could do that. Uh, I know that Eritrea would be willing to do that. Ethiopia is not yet ready. I've been trying to talk them into it, but they're not yet ready to do that. Why? I don't know. I don't know. They want war because if the two people negotiate, the two governments negotiate, I think they will find a common ground that provides peace, security, and also uh, some common destiny in terms of uh, having common market, access to the sea, and yeah, having an common, idea. even influencing you know, the region uh, yeah, towards be becoming it peaceful, uh, prosperous, and, and so on. They could have done great things together in the region in Africa. Yeah, well, I, you asked me why, I don't know. They didn't explain to me why they're not ready. But uh, I, I've been trying to get them to mediate their differences. For example, the question of the delineation of the border. I've been saying, well, look, let's, uh, let's all meet in Geneva, <clears throat> two delegations. Uh, we could have a U.S. government person there or a, na a neutral government, U.N. And uh, in the morning, they will delineate the border. Uh, the Eritreans will go into Badme and take over. And then in the afternoon, they'll begin talks about getting back to uh, to a good relationship again. Uh, do you think it's going to happen? What do you see about the future prospect of Ethiopia and Eritrean relations? I don't see any change. I think it's going to continue the way it is. And uh, unfortunately, there are UN sanctions against Eritrea, which I think are totally unjustified. And the the... The presence of sanctions will make it very hard to have an agreement right now. Uh, let, let me ask you, you wrote an article about uh, time to bring Eritrea in, in from the cold. Why did you write that article and why now? Well, Eritrea is in the situation of being an international outcast. In 2011, on the request of the United States, uh, UN Security Council imposed sanctions on Eritrea. They were accused of helping Shabab in, in Somalia. I've talked to experts, especially in the academic world. I don't have any inside information anymore. And they say, well, we've seen possibility that they were transferring money to the Shabab. But for the last, uh, last two or three years, 
there's absolutely no evidence that they, they're involved with Shabab. Zero, zero evidence. And in October, in October 2014, 14 of the 15 members of the Security Council voted to lift sanctions. There was only one country that refused, the United States. And they have a veto. You see. So the United States has something against Eritrea. Don't save her. She don't wanna be saved. Don't save her. She don't wanna be saved. Don't save her.